Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the earnings conference call for the quarter and year ended 31st March 2024 of Ambuja Siemens Limited, ECC Limited and Sanghi Industries Limited hosted by Philip Capital India Private Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star 10-0 on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Vaibhav Agarwal from Philip Capital India Private Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you, Michelle. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. On uh, behalf of Philip Capital India Private Limited, we welcome you to the earnings call for the quarter and full year ended 31st March 2024 for Ambuja Cements and uh, Ambuja Cements Limited and its listed subsidiaries, ACC Limited and Sangi Industries Limited. Uh, I would like to mention on behalf of Ambuja Cements and its subsidiaries that certain statements that may be made or discussed on this conference call uh, may be forward looking statements related to future developments and which are based on current management expectations. Uh, these statements are subject to a number of risks and Entities and other important factors which may cause actual developments and results to differ materially from the statements made. Uh, Ambuja Cements and its subsidiaries assumes no obligation to publicly update or alter these forward looking statements, whether as a result of new information or future events or otherwise. I will now hand over the floor, uh, hand over the call to Mr. Deepak Balwani, uh, Head Investor Relations at Adani Group's uh, Cement Business. Uh, thank you and over to you, Deepak. Yeah, thank you, Deepak. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for taking out time to join Adani Cement's quarter for FY24 earnings call. On behalf of Adani Cement, a very warm welcome to all of you. On this side, we have Mr. Ajay Kapoor, Chief Executive Officer, and Mr. Vinod Vaiyati, Chief Financial Officer. Before I hand over the call to Mr. Ajay Kapoor for his opening remarks, requesting you all to kindly limit your questions to a maximum of two and then re-enter the question queue. Over to you, Ajay Deep. Thank you, Deepak. Good afternoon to all of you. I ex extend a warm welcome to each of you for joining us in our quarter four and FY24 earnings call of Adani Group Cement Business uh, for Ambuja, ACC, and Sangi. We continue to strengthen our position as a market leader in the cement industry. Our strong operational and financial performance are testament to our business model's flexibility and solid foundation. Adani Cement is becoming stronger over time with an intense commitment towards capacity expansion through both organic and inorganic routes along with efficiency improvement initiatives. Adani Cement's current market share is about 14% plus with an internal target to hit 20% by FY28. To begin with, I would like to share some of the heavy head-level uh, head highlights before dri diving into the specifics. In April 24, Ambuja Cement successfully completed the acquisition of state-of-art 1.5 million ton grinding unit at Tutikurin in Tamil Nadu. This will help strengthening our market share in southern markets. We have increased our capacity by 17% since acquisition through organic and inorganic growth translating to 11.4 million tons. 142 million tons of new limestone reserves secured in quarter 4 FY24, total reserves reaching 7.8 billion tons. In FY24, Ambuja and ACC both achieved all-time highest annualized PAT. In quarter 4 FY24, Ambuja achieved the highest ever clinker and cement sales over the last 20 quarters. Capacity growth from the current 78.9 million tons to 140 million tons will be met through both internal accruals and opening cash flows. We will continue to remain debt free. 4 million tons of clinkering and 4.8 million tons of cement capacity is expected to commence by quarter 4 FY25. The promoters have fully subscribed to the warrants program in the company by further infusing rupees 8,339 crores in April 24 thereby infusing a total amount of 20,000 crores. Promoters have further increased their stake in the company by 3.6% to 70.3%. With strong balance sheet and cash position, this further strengthens and accelerates our growth journey. 
the consolidated quarterly YOY performance, we reported a revenue of 8,894 crores, a jump of 12%. This is driven by a strong focus on our micro market management strategy, expansion of dealer network, blended cement as a mix of total sales maintained at 86%, premium products as a percentage of trade sales increased to 24%. Operational cost for the quarter is at Rs. 4,345 per ton, shows a decline of 9%. This is driven by 13% decline in energy cost, owing to better fuel management, which resulted in reduction of kiln fuel cost by 17% to Rs. 1.84 from 2.21 per thousand kilocal. The transportation cost declined by 8% at Rs. 1,280 per ton on account of footprint optimization, secondary lead distance reduced by 4 km to 48, the direct dispatch to customers has been maintained at 54%. Other expenses were marginally reduced at Rs. 699 per ton with the improvements mentioned on the revenue and cost front, the EBITDA grew by 37% at Rs. 1,699 crores. EBITDA per ton grew by 17% at Rs. 1,026. And the margin expanded by 3.5% to 19.1. The master supply agreement volume stood at 3.4 million tons against 2.4 million tons, an increase of 42%. You have to further look at the master supply agreements which the companies have entered with Sangi. And uh, for the quarter, Sangi to Ambuja was 4.2 lakh tons and Sangi to ACC was 2.5 uh, and that itself is additional uh, volume gain which has come in from these MSAs. As on 31st March 24, the consolidated cash and cash equivalent stood at Rs 15,999 crores with the warrants money of Rs 8,339 received in April, our total cash and cash equivalent currently is at 24,338 crores. Now looking at the full year FY24 YOY performance, revenue up 7% at 33,160 crores, EBITDA up 73% at Rs 6,400 crores, EBITDA per ton grew by 60% at Rs 1,081, EBITDA margin expanded by 7.4 to 19.3%. Tax expenses in FI24 is higher mainly for reversal of tax provision of Rs 150 crores in FI23 for 80 IC benefit. In the best interest of time, I will not discuss the standalone financial performance of the listed companies separately as they are available on the stock exchanges. I will share with you the progress we have made on our announced long term strategic plan. For doubling the capacity of grinding units to uh, capacity of grinding facilities to 140 million tons by FY28, we are targeting <coughs> 35 new grinding uh, units. With the acquisition of 1.5 million of Tutikur in, in Tamil Nadu, our grinding capacity now stands at 78.9 million tons. Another three units are mapped to the upcoming clinker facility at Bhattapara in Chhattisgarh of 4 million tons. These include one unit each in Sankaren and Farakka in Bengal and Vasali Ganj in Bihar. Another two grinding units are mapped to Chandapur grinding unit, Kinkar unit of Maratha cement of 4 million tons. These include one unit at Jalgaon and one unit at Amravati in Maharashtra. Both of them would be 2 million each. Other grinding units which are being set up are at Salai Banwa. Uh, in Uttar Pradesh, Sindri, Marwad in uh, Rajasthan and Mundra in Gujarat. All these units are expected to get commissioned by the end of FY26. Additionally, we would also be setting up grinding units at Husharpur in Punjab and Pune in Maharashtra to be commissioned by FY27. For the new facilities of 4 million ton clinker at Bhattapara, 67% of the civil work is now complete and receipt of major equipment has also commenced. 
expected expected completion is by quarter four FY25. For its corresponding grinding unit at Sankarel and Farakka in Bengal, 52% civil work and 40% respective for both the units have been respectively done. Expected completion of these units is by quarter three FY25. For the new facility of 4 million ton clinker line at Maratha in Chandapur, contract has been awarded on EPC vendor. Project execution work started. Expected completion is by quarter two FY26. These kiln lines will have 42 megawatts of waste heat recovery and provision for utilizing 30% alternate fuels in the kiln. We have placed orders on EPC basis for 2.4 million ton grinding units at Salai Banwa and 1.6 million ton grinding unit at Sindri. Project execution work at both the sites has started. Out of the total capex, all our kilns will be brownfield and the grinding units will be a mix of greenfield 53%. And brownfield 47%. Now I will share with you some of the key initiatives being taken for becoming a cost leader in the cement business. Securing major raw materials at cost competitive prices and efficiency and productivity improvement capex will further help in cost optimization by 8 to 10%. First, let me discuss the steps we have taken to lower our energy cost. Our waste heat recovery capacity at the time of takeover was 40 megawatts in September 22, which we are now targeting to increase to 186 megawatts by March 25. Currently, the WHRS capacity is at 134 megawatts. We have earlier announced our investments of 1000 megawatts in RE, which is expected to get commissioned by FY26 and would ensure that 60% of our power requirement would be met through green power. This would help in reducing the power cost by Rs. 90 per ton by FY28. First phase of 200 megawatts is getting commissioned at Khawra in quarter one FY25. As previously explained, to meet our requirements, we aim to have captive coal supplies. As a result, we are bidding for coal mines in the auctions being conducted by the government. Besides the 1.2 million ton captive mine at Garepalma in Ambuja, uh, we have won the, and bid for 2 million ton coal mine in Dahegao Gowari in Maharashtra and another mine of 2 million ton at Lamaltola in Madhya Pradesh. These three mines together would cater to about 50% of our current requirement. A high share of coal from captive mines and opportunity to buy imported pet coke will further lower our fuel cost. Besides this, within the group, we are also working on other options and I believe with that in the next 12 months time, we should be able to secure 80% to 90% of our coal through our own captive sources. Driven by better fuel management and structural initiatives undertaken, our power and fuel costs have decreased by 13% to Rs. 1,219 per ton in quarter 4 FY24 from Rs. 1,404 per ton in quarter 4 last year. These initiatives include an increase in share of AFR and WHRS. The share of AFR in fuel mix has improved to 10.6% from 8.7%. Share of WHRS in power mix has increased to 13.5% from 9%. The second cost item is the freight and forwarding cost. There are three focus areas for cost reduction here. Reduction in lead distance, warehouse footprint optimization, and railroad mix optimization. We are targeting to reduce the average primary road lead distance to about 100 kilometers. Primary lead distance in, in the current quarter was 276 kilometers versus 271, and secondary lead 48 versus 52. So you can see no marginal but improvements. To further optimize our cost in logistics, we have ordered 11 GPWIS rakes, of which eight have been delivered and the rest are expected to be delivered by the end of quarter one FY25. These rates will enable cost efficient clinker movement from the mother plant. In addition to these, we have also ordered 26 BCFC rates for safe and cost effective transportation of fly ash from thermal power plants to our facilities. We expect 10 rates to be delivered in the current financial year. Because of these initiatives, our logistics cost 
has been reduced by 8 percent to rupees 1,280 per ton in quarter four FY24 from rupees 1,389 in the same quarter last year. To secure our limestone supplies, we have won bits of 15 new mines with total reserves reaching 7.8 billion tons. Our, on ESG, we are committed to net zero by 2050 for Ambuja and ACC with near-term targets validated by SBTI. 60% of power sourced will be from green power by FY28, which will help us to reduce carbon footprint. Ambuja is 11 times water positive, establishing leadership in water governance. Reached an impressive 8x plastic negativity for Ambuja through co-processing of plastic waste in cement kilns. Ambuja and ACC put together used more than 21 million tons of waste-derived resources in FY24, embracing circular economy. We have pledged to plant 8.3 million trees by 2030. Ambuja and ACC created societal values for more than 4.6 million people by contributing to fields like healthcare, education, employment, and sustainable livelihood. We are optimizing the infrastructure at Sangi that would enable efficient transportation of cement and clinker from the plant to the jetty through mechanized conveyor belts. Now looking at the industry outlook, the government's push for affordable housing, increased budgetary allocation to infrastructure and construction, the shift to green energy, demand supply dynamics, and greater consolidation all indicate a positive outlook for the Indian cement industry. We expect higher utilization over the next five years since demand is expected to grow at a rate of 8 to 9 percent faster than the capacity expansion rate. In conclusion, as I mentioned this earlier, at multiple occasions, Adani cement will benefit from accelerated growth, lower cost, and group synergies, all of which will contribute to lead the market and achieve sustainable performance in the near future. So with this, before going for Q&A, uh, I'll request uh, Vinod to also uh, give some opening uh, insights. Yeah, thank you, Ajay ji. Uh, uh, good afternoon, friends. Wonderful to uh, again connect with all of you on another uh, fulfilling quarter with lots of good actions on the business as well as the balance sheet, which Ajay ji has well highlighted. Uh, most importantly, the completion of the warrant program, wherein we also received uh, closer to 8,400 crores in April. Now, uh, so this year we have reported the highest ever uh, PAT uh, in the in the history of Ambuja at 4738 crores. We have also touched net worth of 51,000 crores closer to, and if I add the uh, money of warrants for April, it is closer to 60,000 odd crores. We have also uh, achieved the highest cash position so far, and uh, as of now, say almost 24,000 odd crores. In terms of fixed assets, my balance sheet is again very strong, uh, uh, including CWIP, I'm almost at, say, 23,000 crores. Now, with this healthy uh, balance sheet uh, uh, supported by all the improvement in the KPI, and we have already indicated our uh, cost reduction uh, almost 530 rupees a ton uh, for the reduction which we are envisaging by 28. So we are fully geared up well on growth and supported by all the enablers which I have highlighted in my investor deck as well. Uh, FY25, uh, I will be uh, exiting with capacity of almost 86 million tons. In 26, we should achieve 100, 27, 120, and finally FY28, you will see me achieving 140 odd million tons. So uh, that is how, how the overall narration on the growth as well as the, the cost factors which we want to achieve relentlessly, and uh, we look forward to on the Q&A. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask questions may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use only handset while asking a question. A reminder to all the participants to kindly limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, please rejoin the queue. The first question is from the line of Naveen Sahadev from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes, Naveen, we can hear you. Great. Uh, thank, you for the, thank you for the opportunity. 
two questions. Uh, first, of course, is on the ca capacity expansion plan, and it's very reassuring every single time that the company has maintained the target of 140 million ton in terms of cement uh, grinding. But honestly, sir, as an analyst, my fear, I uh, mean, no, is about on the clinker expansion front because except for about 8 million tons of uh, clinker that we are already pursuing, uh, the, there is like, you know, not much announcement on the clinker front. Uh, even the Mundra unit, I'm saying, uh, is not yet uh, given a specific date or a milestone or if it has been uh, received or not. So if you could just throw some light as to how the clinker capacities will stack up as you gave the cement capacity that will be far more reassuring and will help us, uh, you know, uh, uh, take that into account. Thank you so much. So, Naveen, uh, uh, what I have refrained from saying is, till I have the EC in my hand, I generally don't speak about, uh, you know, kilin lines. But let me uh, make it very clear. Three locations, one in west, one in north, and one in south, 4 million, 3 kilons, we are ready to place orders as soon as we have the EC. And this is not so far in distant future. I'm talking of only a quarter or two at the most. And uh, interesting at all the locations, the entire land is in our position. The leases are in our position. I'm just waiting for the EC. Understood. This is uh, 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 great. Uh, sir, my second question then was... Basically, after... basically, what I've told you is 12 million clinker, which technically can produce... Uh, 20 million plus, uh, uh, you know, uh, cement. So just to add to that, Navin, uh, like uh, from um, our target is to reach almost uh, 76 million tons of uh, clinker by end of the 28. When I, uh, uh, sorry, 82 million tons of clinker. When I look at the 140 million tons, and a good part of this is almost 80 percent of it will be my brownfield expansion, which, which again is a very reassuring. And only 20% will be greenfield for which also a substantial part of uh, limestone and land is already in position. So we have a complete clear outline uh, over this clinker expansion. So when we say cement, it is imbibed that clinker is also parallelly expanding. It's not like they're going to purchase cement and put the purchase clinker and put the cement. So it is in inherently uh, inbuilt over there. Great. And uh, that's also ah, just to, uh, yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Go ahead, please. Sorry, I, sorry to cut you. No, no, I think I'm, I'm, I'm that, good. That's that. all. Please go ahead. Go ahead with your second, second question. Yeah, my second question, sir, then was on the Sangi. And uh, I just have, like, you know, because there has been a, a fundraise announcement recently with a commitment of 2,200 uh, crore. So, in terms of basically, what is the overall game plan for Sangi here? Is it growth capex? Also, quickly, just want to mention here that we came across recently a uh, environment clearance related document where uh, a company has applied for a 10 million ton clinker and a similar 10 million ton uh, cement at uh, at Sangi. So, just wanted to understand what is the overall game plan for Sangi. Thank you. So, Naveen, uh, the, uh, let me first handle the game plan for Sangi. Sangi has uh, a great location. That's the reason we invested in that asset. It has a fantastic uh, fitment of uh, footprint within our ecosystem, especially our uh, west-south corridor. Currently, we have two kilns, uh, which can produce 6.6 uh, .6 million as per the rated capacity. As I speak to you, uh, as you know, the kilns needed refurbishment, so we are doing that. This whole process will be over by H1 of this year. Our plan is to run both the kilns flat out in H2, literally at 100%. Uh, and I think that will that that is the first game plan at Sangi. The second game plan at Sangi is we will be putting up in time to come two more kilns of four million each, and uh, that will then make it one of the largest single location lowest cost uh, plants. Now having handled and of course it will have its own adjoining uh, grinding stations and cement link, uh, linked uh, bulk uh, grinding units of big terminals which Ambuja already has. So that is that is in short the game plan. The issue you are talking of 2200 is basically to get the ICD which Ambuja has earlier given to Sangi to uh, give it back to us. It is uh, more cost efficient and financially a much better structure. Uh, that's the reason they're doing it, in short. And, and just to add, Naveen, uh, uh, and good to share with all of you that uh, Sangi already has been uh, rated now double A. The rating has upgraded from D to double A. And the journey is to become triple A for Sangi as well, like Ambuja and HEC. 
and therefore what ajay ji has highlighted that this icd when i paid from my uh, preference shares that will help us to move into the league of triple a for sangi as well and that was our commitment to the investors of sangi in terms of improving the overall balance sheet and uh, financials we are in this journey thank you sir the next question is from the line of rahul gupta from morgan stanley please go ahead yeah hi uh, am i audible yes yeah hi thank you for taking my question i have two questions uh, so first question uh, uh, taking the sangi uh, game plan forward um uh, based on your comment is it fair to say that uh, you you target something like 5 million ton from sanghi in fiscal 25 and secondly how should one look at sanghi profitability from here thank you so to answer uh, one one question is a simple answer yes 5 million is something minimum we will do uh, number one uh, as you know we have done a msa with sanghi in the current format and that msa is in the public domain uh for the current year nothing changes there i think as and when we make a change to that msa uh, we will we will come back to you uh, the msa basically uh, you can look at at the website it, it is, is a margin of 9% around for the it leaves 9% margin for them and uh, rest since we are selling in our brands uh, of ambuja and acc that margin is then retained in ambuja and acc great this is very helpful so my second question is uh, more from the industry perspective uh we saw industry prioritized volumes at the expense of prices uh, during the fourth quarter and given you and uh, another large player have uh, talked about cost saving initiatives uh, over the medium term is it fair to say that margins expansion will be led by cost control and cement prices may uh, may remain sluggish for longer despite a strong demand outlook uh, any color on this will be helpful thank you it's a very interesting question rahul and you know why i'm saying it because end of the day you know there are two separate streams na huh? one is the stream on cost and productivity uh, as you know many of our initiatives post take out taking over by adani have been accelerated at 10x the speed uh, i think the companies were lagging behind in uh, versus were the competition on waste street on uh, you know some of the other initiatives which needed to be invested so we we and then growth of course so we we are clearly focused on being the lowest cost that's also the adani dna you look at any of our adani companies they in each of the sector we are the lowest cost and highest productivity and thereby it also renders us highest abita so that having said cement industry also is a industry where brand and price and the segments you choose to play i was sizable role i think ambuja and acc are both iconic brands both of them are placed at the highest end as we call it a or a plus pricing uh, on top we have uh, within the trade segment uh, in acc even higher than 30% premium products but at an average level between both the companies we are still more than 25% premium products and we are targeting much higher uh, volumes coming from there that is an area which keeps us little away from day to day commodity wars Uh, but yeah as more capacity comes in and if uh, the sentiment is little down uh, it can have an impact on pricing i believe uh, this is uh, going to get improved because i think post elections we'll see a much more robust program uh, and uh, i i believe gdp should be 7% and cement should play 1.2 to 1.3 times we did a asset check in the last 5 years and we again were proved right that cement has again started behaving 1.2 to 1.3 times So if cement demand is about eight to nine percent, uh, irrespective of cost, I don't think cost is something we're going to pass on. Uh, it's meant also to you know uh, help us grow the business. So pricing, I think, should be stable. Uh, it should not uh, go down, and it should only improve from here. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rashi Chopra from Citigroup. Please go ahead. Thank you. just on the cost side you made a mention uh, in presentation and today that you are expecting the cost to come down by about 500 rupees by fi 28 so uh, is it coming off like this current base and if yes you know, how is that broken up amongst the various heads so rashid this is a uh, very interesting question uh, what i will do is rather than you know deep diving into uh there may be at least 100 line items to get to that number i will not go there it's also not right for me to go there uh what we are basically looking at i'll give you the uh, heads up one heads up is coal mines which i just mentioned in my opening 
I think that's going to be a game changer for us. Uh, number one. Number two, I mentioned about long-term procurement uh, of critical raw material. Uh, we are also targeting a sizable percentage coming through long-term uh, agreements. We are also investing in railway uh, wagons, which help us to streamline day-to-day uh, -day vagaries of uh, increasing raw material prices. Once I have secured uh, the source and I have also secured the transportation, the cost is more or less stabilized. And, and in raw materials, a large part of transportation co the cost is the transportation cost. So we are getting a fix over there. The third and a very important area is the power cost. We already mentioned in the beginning about 100 rupees per ton, or I believe it will be plus 100, coming out of our uh, massive program of investing 10,000 crores in green and waste heat. So today the power cost is about 6 rupees 75 pesa. Uh, over the next five years, this will come down to about 4 rupees 50 pesa or so. And that itself you can work out is about 100, 150 rupees a ton, purely on cement. When you can bring it back on uh, per ton, it might, uh, you know, get adjusted. But purely on production, it will be about 150 rupees. Logistics is another area. As we improve our footprint in the country and also put up four grinding units, 35 of them, and constantly focus on, uh, you know, going direct. We are using digital in a big way. I think today our company is perhaps the highest GPS enabled in the ecosystem, uh, in the large sector, not just cement. Huh? So we have uh, absolute visibility of uh, where our fleet is going. And with that, we are able to see 10 to 15 percent logistics cost optimization. I believe logistics would be a, a big number out of this 500 plus. Let's say 40 percent will come from uh, logistics and other services and uh, about 55 to 60 percent will come from manufacturing and uh, associated adjacencies, which I mentioned. So, Rakhi, also if you look at it, uh, like when we took over in somewhere September, uh, our cost uh, matrices somewhere like on an overall total cost basis per ton, we were almost for 1500 rupees a ton, which uh, this quarter, for example, you will see on a cement, uh, it is 4185 rupees a ton. So, we have almost got it down by 20 percent. And this journey from 4185 to 3640 is a 12 and a half percent. Whatever the uh, uh, idea you have given, 12.5 is strongly believed we will be able to uh, reach this another reduction. So from 20 percent in last uh, uh, 15, um, 15, 18 months to another 12.5 percent. Understood. There are some clearly uh, uh, outlined roadmap uh, for this. And hence, my balance sheet is uh, stronger enough to make all those strategic investments which will bring uh, this uh, savings? So you can calculate, no, I mean, this is an answer also for other potential questions. We are at a EBITDA per ton of upwards of uh, 1,050 uh, or closer to 1,100. Uh, these cost uh, initiatives that we are saying, these are all structural costs. There is nothing related to market. Everything is structural. So you are straight away looking at a 1,500 plus number uh, with the end state. Absolutely. Got it. Thank you. So just continuing on this, like, for example, in this quarter as well, your fuel cost is on a sequential basis, not year on year. On a sequential basis, the fuel cost is flattish, but you've seen uh, a decline in the power of fuel cost per ton of cement. So you know, have we seen, like, the benefits of green energy, et cetera, kind of efficiencies also come in on a sequential basis? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So our uh, – in fact, uh, I mentioned that in the opening also, if you see – our percentage of green energy has improved, number one. Our AFR percentage is also shot up by a couple of percentage points. And then uh, efficiencies at the plant have also increased. We had uh, also launched a new kill in Ameta of AGC. Uh, I think it's already running at 100% uh, plus capacity utilization. It's an efficient new plant. All these uh, initiatives are also helping us. And plus, we had, uh, after taking over, we had also introduced many initiatives, including putting new coolers, uh, new uh, uh, Kinker uh, cooler uh, and uh, equipment, those are also now showing results in improved efficiency parameters. But Rashi, uh, perhaps uh, I just want to clarify to you that this, when you say flattish, in fact, you have reduced our power and fuel on a per ton basis almost by 10%. Yeah, fuel is flat. Fuel is flat. Okay, okay. I, I, yeah. okay. I, hope, I hope I answered, uh, Rashi. Thank you, sir. You may press star and one to ask questions. The next question is from the line of Pratik Kumar from Jeffries. Please go ahead. <coughs> yeah, good afternoon, sir. Uh, and thanks for the opportunity. Uh, first question is on uh, your detail, like uh, on cost and capex timelines uh, on a five year basis. Capex we have talked about also on like I think yearly basis. Is it possible to also uh, give out uh, uh, like cost uh, uh, 
with client estimate on a yearly basis, maybe broad, broad base, but not very specific. That would be too much forward looking, Pratik, you know it, but I can only tell you, you can see sequentially uh, every quarter we've been, what I gave you, heads up numbers, uh, waste sheet number, uh, capacity I spelled out in my opening, it is going up this year, so straight away, uh, you know, waste sheet is at 1 rupee, 1 rupee 10 paisa. That's going to bring down the cost. I also spelled out in this quarter we are commissioning 200 megawatt solar, so it will be available for the nine months or maybe 10 months for this year. You can calculate. That's another cost item. I also mentioned about bringing in uh, 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 additional 10 rakes for fly ash transportation. Uh, that will be additional source for uh, saving our costs. Uh, and I think by the end of the year, we'll also be commissioning uh, state of part new kiln and also three new grinding stations. Uh, in addition to the ongoing program of CAPEX, which was launched earlier, uh, I think some, some of that will also uh, bring in uh, the savings. I think we'll still do a very tight management of fuel costs. We won a lot of good auctions uh, uh, in, in the domestic auctions that were uh, you know, done, both for kiln fuel and CPP fuel. So a large part, part of our coal cost is already secured in those auctions. So that gives us a fairly good assessment of our costs going forward. I hope I've answered your question, Prateek. Uh, yes, uh, and one, one last question on uh, your CAPEX, uh, to, uh, annual CAPEX expectation. Uh, so this year we did 4,500 crore on organic, I think 2,500 on organic. So uh, total 70,000 was in, 7,000 in line with your guidance. Does the number remain same for uh, annual CAPEX? So we, are, we are actually having a very big plan for CAPEX for this year, but, but that includes everything uh, because of uh, buying new railway wagons, also ongoing programs for efficiency. So I would say our total CAPEX uh, would be for growth alone, if you're asking, uh, would be in the range of uh, about uh, five, five, five to six thousand crores. So, so uh, purely uh, growth. Just uh, yeah, purely growth uh, uh, around seven thousand five hundred crores, uh, which we, which we have planned for current year, and uh, uh, it is all on from our operating cash flow is what we are targeting. So the war case of uh, twenty thousand crores of uh, this funds received from the warrant, we keep it for strategic initiatives. But as a important underlying statement that uh, whatever the uh, yearly uh, uh, capex is we we intend to uh, largely uh, use it the internal accruals and the operating cash flows and some part of it will also be spent for completing our ongoing green initiative uh, as you know by fy25 mid uh, but sorry fy26 mid we are targeting uh, completing uh, the remaining 800 megawatts of wind and solar so that also will uh, will need some investments besides the uh, clinker line uh, and the grinding units i mentioned and the railway wagons, which we are in the process of procuring, and efficiency improvement projects, including opening new coal mines. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashish Jain from Macquarie. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, sir, my first question is on the uh, you know, clinker capacity. Um, I thought Vinod sir spoke about 82 million ton clinker by 2028. Uh, so today we are 54, and you know, shall we think that uh, 8 million ton that is announced and uh, 8 million ton that we will do in Sangi, uh, so that takes us to around 70 million tons. So apart from that, there's 12 more million ton that we would be doing, which is what you spoke about, F4 million ton into 3. Is that the uh, broad number? Yeah, so basically, no, no. I, 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 uh, what I will tell you is what we've announced. We've announced uh, already... Uh, two new kilns uh, of 4 million each. Plus, I said I'm ready to go with three new kilns, one in west, uh, which you can take Sangi, uh, one in north, one in uh, south, that is 12 million. That is immediately where the ECs uh, are being uh, awaited. In addition to that, the ECs applications have been filed parallelly. I may get a few more uh, ECs uh, by this year or beginning of next year. We have, interestingly, the land and uh, requisite uh, limestone secured at all the locations for this 140 million. If you ask me, I'm ready for 175 million. So it should not be a worry. Okay, okay, got it, sir. And so secondly, you know, I may have missed this number. Um, uh, did we uh, kind of highlight that the 500 rupee cost reduction that we are talking about is benchmark to a Q4 number, which was at 4185 rupees uh, per okay. ton cost? For the FI, FI, FI is a better number to take, FI24, it's a full year number that reflects the 12-month uh, averaging out. 
you take fy24 number and then say the end state number is what we have given so we have given the end state number you look at that end state number rather than uh, you know 500 and i highlighted the fillers of that uh, journey and i'm uh, i'm 110% confident that journey will be met before time yeah and so the end state is 3650 right yes please yes please okay okay got it sir i'll sir i'll, I'll come back in the queue thank you so much thank sir. you sir. The next question is from the line of Amit Murarka from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Ah, uh, yeah, hi, yeah, good afternoon. Uh, on Sangi, uh, like uh, I wanted to check what is the volume for Sangi? Like you mentioned, point six seven MT uh, was done as MSA between numbers and ACC. What what is the total volume? Uh, so, so I, I have so for March quarter Sangi in terms of uh, clinker we have produced. million tons and in terms of cement we have uh, 0.8 million tons uh, but just to also add to this uh, 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 wherein in uh, march quarter the line the kilan number 2 was uh, non operational but now uh, uh, from this uh, quarter both the kilans are going to be operational and uh, sooner we are going to achieve 17500 tpt per day and as ajay ji mentioned uh, we are looking forward to achieve 5 million tons of clinker uh, for this fiscal So, Sangi, I think numbers are now very clearly. Uh, we have repeated again. So, this is how the numbers will stack up for this year. Around five million benchmark you can take for the current year because we are stabilizing the fillings in the first half. Second half, both the both the fillings will be running flat out. Also, uh, under the MSA, there is a nine percent EBITDA margin, but it's, I see in Q4 Sangi's EBITDA margin is twenty and a half percent. So, like, I just wanted to understand, like, uh, where is this disconnect coming from? Given that the incremental volume by Sangi was only 0.1 million tons. So, it's basically uh, Sangi had a write back of discount provision. There was a fuel cost lower. Uh, then there was also a lower fixed cost, and there was some provision write back. All this was about 33 crores. Uh, that is why you saw a little bit of a update in the. Uh, and you know, uh, this this is done on a quarterly basis. The MSA formula. the price was much lower uh, the cost of production uh, versus uh, you know the next quarter so i think you are seeing that uh, but largely these are some one offs which which gives them uh, this extra uh, which is good for them of course of course yeah. also there was some debottling as well in sangi besides the clinker line so that debottling i believe was expected to get completed faster so uh, is there any update on that so basically uh, we believe so uh, What is 6.6 million clinker? Uh, these are still our numbers. We'll know after the current uh, refurbishment program is over. I think the kilns should be able to produce 7 million plus clinker. I think that is what will really help us. We really don't need so much of cement grinding uh, debottlenecking there because uh, we will be using this clinker for some of our grinding stations. We have recently acquired a Tuti Kuren 1.5 million unit, as you know. So this clinker will be used for that. We also have a group uh, within the group an asset in the hedge. uh we will be using for that plus of course our other facilities and just like also to ha- add to this uh, in terms of deep bottle making um, uh, all of you would know that the evacuation in sangi in terms of the gate p will be happy now we have reached already a draft of uh, 4.5 meter which is improved from 2 meter earlier now we are able to handle a larger vessels compared to in the past so that this uh, uh, important uh, opportunity of evacuation will help us in overall the bottle making of sangi and this draft will further improve uh, as things go forward so we will be able to handle we are targeting almost uh, more than 10000 dwt of vessels down the line uh, correct also just the last question on on uh, on on the uh, strategy around the uh, uh, gujarat market so this incremental volume that is coming from sangi to you and which will only grow in fy25 like uh, which region will it go to like the 5 million ton that you are talking about see we will use uh, as i mentioned sangi clinker and cement both would be used clinker would, would also be used in the second half more towards the tuti kuren new grinding unit uh, we are also using sangi clinker for our the hedge grinding unit which is in gujarat plus we are using the volumes uh, right up to baroda uh, part and also in uh, saurashtra and kutch thank you sir the next question is from the line of ritesh shah from investec please go ahead yeah hi so thanks for the opportunity uh, so my uh, questions pertaining to esg and cost drivers 
so can you indicate what is the sort of clinker factor uh, that we are looking at the two three years out i think it's around 0.6 right now uh, just a related question how do we look at composite cement as well as calcium clay over here uh, that's that's the first question so ritesh uh, you're right uh, our clinker factor is hovering around uh, 0.6 acc is slightly lower because they use slag in east uh, amuja is slightly higher but an average of 0.55 to 0.6 is what we would target as you know uh, you know as we move larger uh, volumes and also cover more parts of the country uh, we will have to also service uh, the large infra markets where as you know the requirement is of opc cement uh, that's also the reason uh, in this quarter also we had a little shift in ambuja on opc in time to come we will have to also cater for that segment having said that on the other hand we will have to continue to find ways and means to improve our clean co factor on the regular products uh so i think that that's the journey we'll have to trans traverse as we go composite cement is a very good quality i think it it is it has a mix of both slag and ply ash wherever we are able to secure a good slag at the right price because as you know slag grinding also has a higher cost element to it uh, at the same time uh, if if you are able to get a mix which is a cost effective mix that is what generally determines our uh, product strategy on uh, composite cement So that that's also a very interesting point you have highlighted and gives me an opportunity to cover more here uh, on the ESG part. Uh, the first A you, uh, slide that I have given to you that uh, we are ahead of uh, 2030 in terms of achieving our uh, plans of SDP. But importantly, for all our incremental projects, this capacity which we are discussing on increasing the volume, uh, all our new uh, capacities are inbuilt with WHRA. They are inbuilt with AFR. They have proper railway infrastructure facilities. uh let us say typically a kiln of 4 million will have 21 megawatt of whrs uh, it will have 30% of afr that is our desired number uh, the overall efficiency on heat value is also going to be sizable uh, we will have a green power which we have said 60% uh, so this will add up to uh, the 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 esg uh, drive what uh, ambuja and ecc and sangi are working on and uh, i am very confident that uh, we will be having a very high score of esg down the line I, uh, sir, uh, if you could just comment on calcium clay, does it feature anywhere on the plants, or is it uh, more a storyline at this point? At this moment, uh, to be very honest, uh, yeah, one or two industrial trials have been done by some people. We are studying it. We are also partnering with a uh, few institutions. Uh, we'll have to do more work on it, to be honest. Abhi tak commercial scale pe nahi hua. Okay, fine. And sir, my second question is on cost. Uh, sir, you have indicated on the logistic cost, but could you comment on the mix on road, rail, and sea? Uh, I think Vinod ji did touch upon a higher graph. So, what is the percentage of volume that we moved via sea last year now at a consolidated basis, and how it could change your next two to three years? And uh, the second question on, sorry. Quite good, good. Please for the first question. Uh, uh, yeah, and the second question was on fuel cost. I think we have given a number of 1.75 rupees for full year. Uh, is that how one should read it, given we have already locked in uh, the volumes? Uh, full. So we should be looking at another four to five paisa improvement, huh? Over there on the on the fuel side, on the logistics. Uh, basically, if you see, we are currently hovering at about uh, 26 uh, percent, uh, uh, rather 27 percent rail. Uh, I think the rail coefficient will more or less uh, remain where it is because our volumes are going up. and some plants are better served to uh, you know road logistics so more or less this is what it will be and c will change once the sangi c infrastructure changes in time to come uh, i think that needs a little bit of a different game plan and we are working on it i think i'll come back and talk to all of you about it uh, once we are fully ready with that uh, because that needs a very different uh, game that 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 will take about 18 months to play out there i think there will be a very different logistics model on the west coast or uh, and i think that will have a sizable impact on our freight cost thank you so yeah but ball park i think sea freight we can expect around say 10% uh, by 20 next after 24 24 months yeah. yeah yeah please go with the next question thank you sir ladies and gentlemen this will be the final reminder and no further reminders would be given after this that you may please press star and one to ask questions The next question is from the line of Sumangal Nevatia from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, good afternoon, sir. Thank you for the chance. Uh, my first question is on the broad uh, corporate structure. 
uh, we are now having three separate uh, listed cement companies. So one, uh, what's our long-term strategy here? Do we intend to keep running three separate companies? And in the light of MSA, uh, I mean, our large part of the benefits uh, already captured or a potential uh, some bit of consolidation could have further benefits on the cost side or some synergy side. So, Songar, I can handle first the second question and then I'll come to the first one, which is uh, MSA. Uh, MSA, I think uh, from the time when we started to, to where we are, I would say we al almost reached uh, uh, a level where it is it is operating by default, right? Uh, we have uh, uh, complete uh, algorithms and computer systems and programs. The lowest cost plant uh, serves the market. Uh, and the uh, and the highest EBITDA uh, yielding uh, you know uh, route is what works. So I think that's what we are trying to achieve. Number one, I think the Sangi is a new entrant, and so that will take one year uh, uh, to stabilize, uh, which I believe should happen already. It's already working very beautifully well. Uh, so other than that, I don't think uh, there is any any further uh, comment on MSA side. I'll make one comment for everybody. Uh, you know, you will find going forward. I would encourage all of you to look at Ambuja results as a console only because my job as a CEO for the entire outfit is to get the best out of all. And when I squeeze the juice of each of the entities and get the maximum benefit for my shareholders is when you see the console results of Ambuja uh, and not necessarily individual entities. So I think that's where you're seeing the play of uh, you know, MSA really playing out in, in full potential. I'm now answering your first question on the corporate structure. I think as a management team, we are one team which is running the show. Uh, so therefore, uh, in terms of uh, sharpness, focus, uh, you know, uh, timelines from the time we make a decision to execution, I think there is no bureaucracy. We, we work pretty sharp as one entity, even though we have three legal entities. For the reasons uh, known to all of you, I cannot comment any further on uh, next steps, but I can only tell you, uh, whenever we are ready for any further next steps, uh, we will we'll come out uh, transparently as per law. Understood. That, that's very useful. Uh, my second question is on our market share target, uh, which 20% I believe is uh, basically uh, from our organic capacities in organic expansion. Uh, so if, if I just do some rough math, uh, from currently around 12 or 14% to 20%, uh, in a 6-10% kind of a growing market also, we will require a high team kind of growth on the sales volume over the next 2-5 years. So, practically just want to understand how how is the bottom-up plan or strategy here? I mean, do we, uh, can we practically achieve this kind of high growth from existing capacities without really distorting or deflating the prices uh, in the market? Some, some thought process here would be helpful. So, two things. Uh, number one, uh, we have a program to put 140 million, uh, you know, so I'm very confident we would be ahead of the curve on that program. Our utilization levels for both the companies have never gone below uh, mid 80s. Uh, and act actually, large part of our plants are operating at 90%, 95%. So as soon as we have a plant, it takes about a year. Like I just mentioned, Ameta plant came in central region, ACC Ameta. Uh, we have produced uh, 300,000 tons uh, uh, in the month of April sprinkle, which annualizes 3.3 million, which is its uh, peak capacity, so more than the peak capacity. So typically it takes eight months to a year to have full stabilization. Uh, both the companies have a very strong either distributor network. We have over one lakh channel partners. We are investing more in the brands, and you would see that, uh, you know, the, the renewed focus and trust. We are increasing our technical and uh, field force. Uh, and we are uh, we are making sure that uh, our product quality remains top. So I think these are the three fundamentals when you want to increase market share. Uh, and also in many markets, we are undersupplied. Now, recently, we have taken a grinding station in Tamil Nadu. So we are undersupplied there. I believe it should not be very difficult for us to ramp up very fast. Likewise, uh, in South, we've been actually losing market share because we don't have capacity. As soon as we put up new capacity there, uh, ACC has a tremendous, uh, you know, brand name in many parts of South, and we should be able to ramp up. Like, same is the case in Uttar Pradesh, parts of Central uh, India, where we have very strong brand image. Gujarat has been our core market. Maharashtra has been our core market. I believe we should be able to increase our market share. 
Last quarter numbers uh, is a good reflection because this is a question asked to me every quarter. I think we have grown at about 17%, uh, which is much more than the industry growth. Uh, and we have not really disturbed the markets because we still play within our premium segment. So I believe India will grow, number one. And number two, uh, with that, with a, with, a, with a capacity coming in every year in one or two regions, not across all the country, we should be able to spread the risk and also capture market share. Uh, but the, the, the good part is India is growing and we are growing along with that. Thank you, sir. The next question is from the line of Indrajit Agarwal from CLSA. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. A couple of questions. First, again on the industry, right? So you have been growing much ahead of most of the peers, but if you look at some of the larger guys, <laughs> they have also had the double-digit growth. So who do you think is losing market share and what happens to them going ahead? Do you think the smaller players become more, less and less relevant in the next three, five years? I think uh, it's very difficult for me to comment on, uh, you know, relevance of smaller players, but I can only comment that eventually in the long term, uh, you will find uh, if you have a right cost structure, if you have the right architecture of uh, distribution points, if you have a well laid out strategy of how you want to service your various segments, uh, IHB is one segment which is you call largely trade in the cement trade and the non-IHB generally we call it non-trade. But it's not that simplistic, it's a further uh, you know, micro marketing at each and every level. So you have largely housing, which has mass housing, small housing, individual housing, and then you have infra where you have government and you have uh, within government, you have railways, roads, bridges, highways, uh, metros, uh, so on, irrigation. Uh, and then you have, uh, you know, ICI, the buildings and uh, commercial. I think for each of the segment, you will have to have a, you know, strategy. The companies which will have a good strategy here, the companies which will have the right product mix, the companies which also will be the lowest cost, I believe are the companies which will be able to uh, take full advantage of the uh, cement sector, which interestingly today is 120 million tons, or per head, per capita is still 270, word average is 500. Uh, I think uh, in time to come, just to meet the 8% growth every year, we need about 40 million tons of new capacity to be added. So I think uh, very difficult for me to say ki kaun relevant rahega nahi, but relevant ho rahega jo ye sab kar paega. So Indrajit, uh, just also add, I think uh, this is like now industry in terms of cons consolidation, the scale, size and efficiency are very important factors and those with the stronger balance sheet have the ability to invest uh, on the on the efficiency uh, capacities and the growth. I think uh, that those uh, definitely will have a good plan of uh, of uh, cost led uh, leadership and uh, improving the expanding the margin. When I look at like my numbers, September 22 when we took it over, again my volume was at 12.5 million ton for the quarter, and then this time when we hit 16.6. But when I look at my margins, they've only expanded, and that is precisely the journey which is going to be down the line in a much more uh, amplified manner. Uh, hence. Uh, you can figure it out who will be able to better uh, catch on this opportunity and who will be perishing on it. But definitely Ambuja and ACC and Sangi as a group are sitting on a huge stronger balance sheet to make those investments and opportunities. Sure, thank you. Uh, my second question is on the coal blocks that we have won. Historically, what we have seen is Indian coal cannot cater to the kilns given that they are generally low calorific, calorific value. So the coal mines that we have won uh, are they uh, sufficient or adequate for kilns or these are just for blending purpose? How do you see that? No, no, they are 100% for the kilns. Uh, the, good, uh, the good advantage is uh, we have uh, uh, Dare Palma 4, which is the mine Ambuja won in 2018. One of the reasons why uh, Ambuja has also been able to show a good reduction in coal cost is because uh, we are using uh, coal from uh, this mine. Uh, most of our mines are underground mines. Uh, in fact, when we are planning our future, uh, we are looking at uh, G5, G6, G7 uh, quality of coal for the kiln and uh, about uh, lower quality for captive power plant. Some mines are very interesting where I can do both. In one seam, I'm able to get a coal which is very good for captive power and at other seam, I can get a coal uh, for the, for the, uh, the kiln. 
this is where i believe uh, we are very lucky uh, very fortunate we are part of uh, an ecosystem a platform called adani where we have some of the smartest guys who are uh, you know running coal mines who understand coal and uh, my coal uh, team at the group and the coal team in the cement the fuel management team when they when they interact with each other i think the learnings and lessons of uh, running multiple coal mines as mdos trading i think this is where it really helps us uh, uh, having a very sharp shooted strategy every coal mine that we win or we plan it goes to the asset test of what quality what grade and uh, generally by rule we don't like to wash because we believe a lot of uh, wastage happens there we try straight away work on good quality coal thank you sir this will be the last question for today which is from the line of satyadeep jain from ambit capital please go ahead hi thank you a um, couple of questions uh, one on the entire um, strategy for south um, you can understand uh, for the work this is sanghi cement directed to south when you look at uh, sanghi itself at a floating terminal of the cost of uh, kochi you now uh, tuti korin um, the strategy is just for to understand from strategic point was comparing kochi floating floating terminal in tuti korin you don't adani port doesn't have its own port so how do you plan to get cement in south uh, strategically and into what cost can you get especially if you use somebody other uh, some other company ports that's the first question so uh, satyajit thanks for the question uh, if you recall even before uh, we became part of adani parivar uh, ambuja cement was a pioneer in uh, spearheading the entire coastal uh, sea transportation way back in 90s we had set up our uh, own port in muldwarka in gujarat ambuja nagar uh, deep sea with a multiple which could also take handy max vessels we have a jetty in in, in in mumbai we have a jetty in cochin we have a jetty in terminal in mangalore all deep sea yeah? uh, so we have good knowledge both in ambuja and we have a solid knowledge within the group first ship of uh, uh, clinker being loaded from sangi is already getting uh, ready to come to tutikoren carrying 50000 plus tons of clinker uh, it will land at the tutikoren port all arrangements have been made the costs are perfect uh, and from uh, the unit is about a uh, couple of kilometers uh, you know i think about 20 30 kilometers away uh, and it works pretty efficient because the ship size is 55000 tons so it becomes pretty efficient when we move that Uh, number one. Number two, we also have uh, uh, a power plant close by, where our group has already, uh, you know, in advanced stages of uh, acquisition, and that uh, shows us a flash, which is one of the biggest costs, as you know, in a when you make cement, 35 percent uh, coming at a very low cost flash, an assured uh, cost. That makes Tuti Korin already a very very viable proposition. Cochin, uh, you forgotten, Ambuja already has a, a, a bulk cement terminal already. in mangalore ambuja already has a bulk cement terminal uh, and i think uh, our strategy of sanghi as i mentioned in time to come i'll come out and make a full disclosure uh, as 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 it pans out but it will have multiple uh, you know grinding stations uh, the hage is already one which i mentioned kuti koron is the second one i mentioned uh, in addition we are in the process of uh, finalizing and uh, getting ready ready with few more uh, so i think that will play out pretty efficiently thank you sir ladies and gentlemen due to due to time constraint that was the last question for today i would now like to hand the conference over to mr vaibhav agarwal for closing comments over to you sir yeah thank you on behalf of philip capital india private limited we would like to thank the management of ambuja cements acc limited and sanghi industries for the time on the call and we also thank all the participants who are joining the call uh, michel we will now conclude the call thank you very much sir thank you members of the management thank ladies you all and, thank you sir Ladies and gentlemen on behalf of Philip Capital India Private Limited that concludes this conference we thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines thank you